Hey guys, Mike here. If you're new to my channel, we do everything concrete here. Today we got a big, big house pour we just did, but the video is going to be about this smaller floor here that we're doing up top. It's, you know, there's got to be an easier way. That's what the thumbnail said. And I'll get to that in a minute and we'll talk about what I mean by that. But right now I just want to talk about, you know, us pouring this little floor here. Now, if, if you're new, Thanks, thanks for clicking on the thumbnail. Please consider subscribing if you like concrete. If you're a returning viewer, man, I really appreciate you guys. Thanks for coming back and watching my videos. Leave a comment down there. Let me know who you are. I'll give you a shout out on the next video. Um, but today, what we're doing is we got, a, we got a big house and then this little addition up top. And the, what they did to prep for this is you know, you know this is a four foot frost wall all the way around this so they dug that all out the guys came in they did the foundation then they backfilled the inside of this with gravel compacted it about every eight inches when they when they backfilled it and got it up to almost top of wall four inches below the top of wall and the floor is matching top of wall so what they did was they put some styrofoam down. Now all that water on the styrofoam was from the night before. They we got like a brief shower, and you know the styrofoam. They taped all the seams, so there wasn't really much place for that that little bit of moisture that was on the styrofoam to go. So we're just going to force it out over the edge just by using the concrete to get rid of that. We're using today. We're using a 3500 psi mix. It's got a high range water reducer in it, so we can pour a pretty loose slump without hurting the strength. We got fiber mesh in the concrete. We always use what's called micro fiber mesh. You you can't even barely see it in there, but that's the type of reinforcement we use. Right currently, right now, we're having a really hard time getting any wire mesh. It's just the demand for it is so high and. The supply is so short that you can't even get wire mesh now so for something like this the fiber mesh is going to be fine the uh, the thickness we're pouring is four inches that's a pretty standard thickness for our floors I don't know about you guys but what do you guys pour for floors in your area most of ours are all four inch unless you know for, for especially for residential houses like this um, unless we're driving something heavy over it then we'll bump it up to six or eight inches you can see that water's kind of messing with the edge a little bit, but it'll it'll all evaporate here in the end, as you'll see. There's Javi. Javi's helping us out on this one. He, uh, you know, he just says, "Hey, if you ever need any help, give me a call. I'll come help you pour." So when we have a little bit bigger pours, we give Javi a call, and he can he can do anything we can do. So it just makes it a lot easier. Darren's finishing off getting that dumped. He's going to leave a little bit of a hole back there in case we're high so we don't have to shovel any out. I'm over there magging the edges, making sure those are all right to, right to the top of the wall. Darren and Luke now grab the straight edge. They got about a 14-foot screed there. They're just, you know, Luke's just running out over the edge. Darren's kind of wet padding, wet screeding right there. You can see he knows he's level when he leaves that little mark on the end of the screed. Uh, all the way all the way down as he's screening you can see it's pretty consistent there he's he's just leaving the mark right on the surface so if he has a consistent mark like that everywhere he screeds then that's a really nice level screed and then he's just kicking his footprints in as he goes so we call that kick screeding this is the way we were taught we never use we never use pipes or screed rails or anything like that we were just always taught to wet screed this is really really easy for us so it's it's basically just the only way we screed other than other than using a power screed which we did in the bigger floor down below and you can see that I'll link the video at the end of this video so you can watch that and see how we use that one that was using that power screed down below made pouring that house floor really easy you can see how Darren just kinda of wet screeds right there kicking his feet as he goes so he doesn't have to stop And then we'll get it bowl floated. So what I decided, now I'm going to put a finish on this. They are going to end up covering it with tile or something. But what I decided to do was I was like, okay, I'm just going to smooth it out a little bit better for the tile guy. So I said to myself, I'll just go over it by hand a few times. 
I thought it was going to be pretty easy just to do that instead of breaking out a power trowel. And it was about 400 square feet, roughly. So, you know, I was just figured I'd mag it out, hand trowel it a couple times, and that, and then that ended up would be pretty easy. But what I found out as I got on here with my skids was, you know, because of all that styrofoam, it didn't allow any of the mixed water to really get soaked into the sub base. It all had to come up to the surface and try to evaporate well I mean most of it evaporated but some of it there was still quite a slurry on the surface so it, it made it kind of messy and I'm working that slurry backwards as I go and then I just kind of I kind of flick it over the edge to help the surface dry up a little bit but the the mix just felt after I did this the mix felt a little sandy so I was like you know what there's got to be an easier way there's just got to be an easier way so what I did was I, I ended up backing up my truck and I had a little mini trial. This is a 30 inch power trial. I got like three of these. So I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna I'm just gonna finish it off by power troweling. It was actually pretty hot today. It, it got up to about 80, it was out in the sun. You know, and when you pour concrete out in the sun on styrofoam like that, when it starts to go, it really starts to flash off quick. So that's that's what I meant by there's got to be an easier way and and this this was it today for me <laughs> this made finishing it ten times easier so I just I rent I started that thing up it it uh it's got like ten inch finish blades on it so the the blades are actually pretty small but the thing finishes really good it, it it's it doesn't have a lot of weight to it so you definitely don't want to wait too long before you hit a floor with it. But uh, it goes really good. I'd really love to have an MBW one so I could compare the MBW 30-inch trial to this Whiteman trial. I've had these Whitemans forever. But if you've seen some of my other videos, you've seen that I got that, that big 36-inch uh, heavy-duty MBW trial that works really, really nice. So I, I mag floated it out by hand. Then I laid it down. We call it laying down with a finish blade. So I hit it with a finish blade once. So this is the second time I'm hitting it with finish blades. And this thing's getting really smooth now, as you can see. It literally takes, you know, after you go around the edges by hand, it literally takes about, I don't know, maybe a minute to hit something this size with the power trial. So <laughs> it really doesn't take very long. It's just a matter of waiting for it to be ready the timing part of it so this one i kind of left in real time here and it actually it actually this one here i was pretty careful on because this was the last pass so i wanted to make sure everything looked really really good for the tile guy and i wasn't i wasn't leaving i mean some of it was getting pretty smooth at this point I guess I didn't really need to burn it out like glass for him because he probably didn't really want it that smooth but I wanted to make sure it was nice and flat for him that was the key and this last pass here you know probably took me a little over three minutes to do maybe yeah I'm just kind of taking my time I don't really have the power trial up on full rpm either Just running it as fast as I need to to get a good, good smooth finish. So, what do you guys think? Do you think I made the right decision? Was it was it easier just pulling that power trial out of the truck, getting it off, putting it on the floor, and then hitting it with it this way, or do you think I just should have kept hitting it by hand, you know, two or three times, and and just finished it out that way? Let me know what you guys would have done down in the comments. And we'll just all compare notes a little bit. <laughs> so again, if you haven't seen the video where we poured the big floor down below with this one, we started that one at 7 in the morning. Got done pouring that one about 8.15. We got up here, you know, 8.15, 8.30, started pouring this one. This only took about 20 minutes to pour, so we was done before 9.00. And right now, it's about noon. It's about 12 o'clock right now, and this is pretty much done. I'm kind of, I'm kind of just smoothing out around that pipe. It's rock, pretty much rock hard. 
barely leaving any any footprint at all now and then uh, Luke's gonna come up and help me with the edges <laughs> and then we're gonna pull this trial off clean it up and then that'll be it for me today I'm gonna I'm gonna pack this trial up and then I'm headed out I got about three or four other jobs to go look at and get ready for the rest of the week so that's that's about it guys was it easier or not let me know down in the comments again I really appreciate you guys watching you guys you guys make this channel so good we'll uh we'll see you on the next one